Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Let's get cracking in the Father's Word, Proverbs chapter 28. We're going to finish this old book of Proverbs soon, and then we're going to go into a great book of prophecy. Let's title this chapter 28 as um, Wisdom or How You Gain Knowledge Against Unscrupulous Dealing. Now, that's something you need to be a little sharp on because there are a lot of people out there that will take advantage of you. So you need to know their M.O., what to look out for. God doesn't leave anything out in these rules of the road telling you how to find and be wise, find wisdom and be wise, especially. I think toward this generation, one need to sharpen up. So uh, we ask that word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name, chapter 28, Proverbs, verse 1, and it reads, The wicked, or the godless, Flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. In other words, somebody that does something crooked and they're godless, they have no faith in anything, uh, when no one pursues them, they're always looking over their shoulder. Never any peace, never a moment. That's why that's a sorry route to choose. And I wonder, you take, we have people in this generation that have labs, you know, stashed back in the woods and other places to uh, manufacture unscrupulous compounds. And I wonder how many thousands of times they look over their shoulder or hold their breath, the phone rings, their heart stops. What, a, what a, you know, how a person would want to live that way is beyond me, whereas a righteous person is bold as a lion. Why? That's why these Proverbs are interesting. You want to figure out why. Because they know God protects them. That is to say, gives them the wisdom whereby they are prepared uh, before a fact, whereby they can handle a situation, and that that they can't handle, God can. So naturally, they can prowl as the lion. Why? The lion's the king of the jungle. And if God is your father and you're following him, it's no wonder that the godless fear. And uh, we're protected with knowledge and wisdom. Verse 2, for the transgressions of a land, many are the princes thereof. In other words, if, um, if a nation transgresses a great deal, there's sin, corruption, and so forth, you're going to have leaders change uh, rapidly. No one in power very long. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. In other words, he's going to bring order and stability. Why? He, he's familiar with Proverbs. He's familiar with Ecclesiastes. He's familiar with our Father. And there's only one place you can find permanent, or that is to say long-lasting, prolonged stability and order, and that is through true wisdom, which is to say our fathers. You know, it's amazing, but within these Proverbs, you have the actual emotions, though it is put forth in a very simplistic way. You have the emotions and what, how a person chooses to function in the way they do, whereby you're able to keep ahead of the game. So. Verse 3, a poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no flood. Now let's take the natural end of it first. A, a sweeping rain which uh, leaveth no food, rather. In other words, it's just a total washout. Now, first of all, the, the first word poor in this particular verse means a needy person. And the second time the word poor is used, it's a totally different word in the Hebrew tongue, and um, it means the weak, even down to the handicapped. And any time that a needy person takes advantage of his own, especially the handicapped, it's like he takes everything, the spirit, um, the heart, 
uh, is void of any morality whatsoever to rip off somebody that needs help themselves. But sometimes when a person is in need, if there's a little greed, they'll go for it. Understand that. There are scrupulous operators. Verse 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. You might as well. But such as keep uh, the law contend with them, or contend meaning angry. You're angry when you see someone break the law and think they're going to get away with it. That think they can run over people, that think they can take advantage of the needy. It angers a righteous person. It's called righteous indignation. And it, it comes to the surface. And um, uh, that's why in the old days, occasionally, if an unscrupulous character came to town, he usually left on a rail with tire and feathers, and uh, he was happily and merrily on his road. Never to return to that town again. Why? They wouldn't put up with that type of stuff. All right? Well, good old days, I guess, are gone. We now go to send them to the jail, and they stay there for 10 years, and they finally get around to having some little plea bargain, and they're back right in the same community, and uh, around the circle goes. Good old days. Uh, it's good to be one time rid of them, and they're gone. It beats three times you're out. First time you're out. That's the way it should be. Verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment. They, they don't know what is right. They have no conception, and I mean that in earnest. But they are raised in an environment and, and uh, that of uh, people that have no morals from our Father's Word. They don't know right from wrong, all right? They don't know how to act or what's right. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. Why? All wisdom comes from God, and God will let nothing happen that he has not foretold you if you're not biblically illiterate. If you're familiar with his word, you will have been warned. You see, this whole world is a matter of choice. And you have free will. And you can choose to go against God or with him. It's up to you. But he gives us these warnings that to go against him, you're going to lose every time. There, there is no, why, why would anyone choose to be a loser? Because of what I stated before, they don't know the difference between right and wrong. Because of what they've been taught. And um, um, an atmosphere that feels perhaps it's cute to mock justice. Well, I got some bad news for someone that thinks they can beat justice. The final judge will be here, and he was there when you did the crime. He knows exactly what happened. He could give you a playback if he chose, and I'm talking about the great judge that's coming. Stand by. It won't be that long. Verse 6, better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse, uh, perverse here, the Hebrew word means double dealing, all right? That is double dealing in his ways, though he be rich. In other words, uh, why is the poor that is uprighteous, uh, upright, why? He has peace of mind. And there's only one way you can be happy in the, the flesh. Money won't do it. Riches will not bring you peace of mind. And I know there's the old saying, well, I'd like to try it for a while. It'd sure have, well, it doesn't last that long, okay? And um, by that I mean the feeling of security because riches will not give you that security. It comes from only one place. Some double dealer will come along. Why? Because one that is rich and is a double dealer is a crook anyway. And go back to, um, go back to verse 1. A, a double dealer, he runs even though a man doesn't pursue him. That's just the way it is. Doesn't pay very well, friend, when it comes to a good night's sleep. Verse 7. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son. And what law are we talking about? God's law. But he that is, uh, that's to say that he keeps instruction also. The word is instruction. But he that is a companion of riotous men, 
uh, shameth his father, both the heavenly father and his own father. Why? You're what you run with. That's what you're branded as. I'm going to tell you something, young people. Your name is a very valuable thing. If it has a real good reputation, that's worth a lot of money. Your family name is the fact that you always pay your bills, that your word is good. If you give it, you'll stand by it, that you are dependable and trustworthy. That's worth a lot of money. That's like having money in a bank as far as operating in this world is concerned. So protect your good name. Don't run with the wrong crowds or the tarnish of their name begins to rub off on yours and hey, pretty soon down the tubes. Verse eight, he that by usury and unjust gain, unfair interest rates, increases his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. In other words, um, he that um, uh, practices usury, and, and, and many of us today would say, well, I'm, I'm thinking of a greedy old miser, okay? Hey, I said, I'll loan you this at so and so, and here, and that's all he thinks about, all right? Is making gains because he has a little cash that he can put out on interest with unfair charges, all right? You're not supposed to uh, charge your brother interest anyway. But it's all right to charge interest uh, for those that have a good reason for needing a loan, but let it be at a fair rate, all right? Because the old miser is going to do without, be a miser all of his life, and his son uh, usually, many times, will have seen his misery conditions and will bless the poor. And, and it's kind of a twofold parable in as much as the old miser gives it back anyway through his offspring. It's just kind of life. Watch it and think back. And I'm sure you've seen it come to pass in more places than one. Verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, haven't got time for it, don't have time to study today, don't care about that stuff, that type of person, even his prayer shall be an abomination. And then you know what he says? Wonder why God doesn't answer my prayer. God never hears my prayers. Well, it's no wonder. You don't meet any of the conditions of the ifs that are requirements and conditions connected with having a prayer answered, so why should he listen to you? He makes it very clear that he's turned off to you. And until you get him turned back on again, you know, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty heavy thing when you realize that God considers your prayer to be an abomination. And kind of in a way, if somebody asks, and they're an habitual uh, of turning their ear away from and respect uh, deserving by our Father of mankind, then to ask for something is kind of an abomination. Think about it. Verse 10, I don't want to put anybody on a guilt trip, but uh, be fair with your father. You can't con him. And he's laying it out straight here. When a uh, prayer is used to consider it a very uh, religious thing, let's say. Uh, I, I don't like using the word there, but I will so that mo everyone, every, all ears will understand. And when the most religious thing you've got is an abomination to God, you've got trouble. Verse 10, Who's, whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright, that's to say the innocent, shall have good things in possession. It's a very serious thing to mislead people. And you always want to take that... Um, very serious, especially if it has to do with teaching or anything of that nature. You cause the righteous to go astray in an evil way, and if you're, if you're incorrect in teaching a bunch of nonsense and cause people to turn away from God, you've got a lot to answer for. Verse 11, 
do your homework is what I'm saying and make sure you're you're correct to the best of your ability. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, his own self, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. Uh, in other words, the poor that has wisdom can see through the rich man, sees right through him. And besides that, wi wisdom is a gift from God, and it, it has absolutely nothing to do and doesn't depend on any earthly uh, position or anything else. You either have it or you don't. Or you can acquire wisdom always by loving our Father and getting into this letter that he has written to you telling you how to be wise. It still remains a gift from him, and he freely gives it for those that deserve it. What do I do to deserve it? Get into the Word. Verse 12. When righteous men do rejoice, I would rather have translated this when righteous men triumph, they win. There is great glory. But when the wicked rise or win, a man is hidden. In other words, if a wicked person wins, overcomes, rather than there being glory or rejoicing, they're either going to hide themselves or have to hide their wealth for fear they're going to be caught up. Now think about that. God is very uh, aware of the emotions of mankind. And this, again, would kind of go back to the first verse of scrupulous people, how that they run when nobody's chasing them. Why? Guilt. Even when they are, even when they pull off some uh, scrupulous uh, affair and come out way the gainer for it, they can't tell anybody. So they hide it within themselves or hide themselves. They sure wouldn't want the IRS to know about it. 13. He that covereth his sins um, shall not prosper. That's to say he that denies his sins. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Now that's a very strong Christian teaching. I mean, it's uh, yes, it's the Old Testament, but we Christians basically live by this because a man is a fool that does not deny his sins to Almighty God, that would deny his sins to Almighty God, when in the first place God is familiar with it, that is to say, after the Son paid the price on the cross that on repentance uh, you're going to prosper. Why? You're going to have grace, unmerited favor. He's going to forgive you. And uh, that mercy is going to come forth. So it's important that you repent to your Father and let Him know that you love Him and request that forgiveness. Never deny it. Verse 14. Happy is the man that um, feareth always. Um, I would still rather transfer this word even fear as re love or revere. Let's read it. Happy is the man that, uh, that loves and revereth always, reveres the Father, respects those that are right, and so forth. But he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. In other words, with no forgiveness, sooner or later, the pressure described in verse 1 catches up to them. One that hardens their heart and never has a moment's peace. They're grumbly, grouchy, unforgiving, and are just mad at themselves, really, but they think it's the world that they're mad at. And the world has very little use for people of that nature. Fifteen scrupulous people, uh, scrupulous dealing. That's what this chapter is about. Verse 15, as a roaring lion and a raging, uh, raging, raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. 
a roaring lion, it means growling, okay? It means he has the kill in his mouth and he shake it and he's growling saying, get away from me, I'm under control and I'm going to, I'm in control and I'm tearing up this person. Well, that's what a wicked ruler is over poor people, unfortunately. Thank God for good rulers, 16. The prince that wanteth understanding, uh, that means he's devoid of it, okay? Got no common sense whatsoever, but he's lacking wisdom, void of it, okay? Understanding is also a great oppressor. One follows the other. If he hasn't wisdom, uh, if it is void, if it is empty, he's going to oppress the people. But he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. That is to say, he will rule for a long, long time. Why? Because the people will love him. Verse 17. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Listen carefully. Let no man stay him. In other words, what is it saying? Never help a murderer. If you are on a jury and you say for some reason, because this is a good friend of mine or this man lives like I do, I, I know he's guilty, but I'm going to set him free. You're guilty. You're going to fall into his same pit. The chief judge knows you and he's very angry about those that flaunt justice. Well, you don't understand, brother. I had it rough, and I had to grow up, and people despise me. Hey, I grew up in the Depression, friend. I know what hardship is really like. And you know what? Uh, it made a better man out of me. So don't give me that stuff about the community I live in makes me a weakling. It's a lie. Been fed to you by a bunch of propagandists. The rougher you have it, if you're a real man, woman, or child of God, it will make you stronger to rise from the dust of a time rather than to listen to some pop-off spewing off injustice to cover crimes by a marauding people. It won't fly, and the true judge is coming. What it's saying here is don't help a murderer or you become a part of him. You're guilty of the murder yourself. And he's going to only one place, the pit. And as it is written in, uh, what is it? Uh, the first epistle of John, chapter three, verse 15, a murderer cannot have salvation in his heart. He can beg for it, he can plead for it, he can repent. But until he is executed or dies naturally and returns to the Father, he's never going to have it. He's still got that to answer for, not on earth, but to the Father. That's why it states very clearly that he's fleeing to the pit, meaning he's rushing headlong to hell and doesn't know it. Verse 18, and don't help him or you go with him. Verse 18. Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. You try to do what's right, you're going to be saved in the Lord. But he that is perverse in his ways shall fall at once. He's going, he's going to, that doesn't mean immediately. It means there is a time coming when he's going to perish instantly. Meaning there's not going to be any other time. Do you know when that is? Well, read the last two verses of... Uh, the 20th chapter of Revelation is called the second death. It means the death of your soul when you go into the consuming fire and God is a consuming fire, blotted out forever and ever and ever, smoke rising to the heavens. At 19, he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. That's just nature, that's plain old common sense. The harder you work, the luckier you get because there's no such thing as luck. You make your own breaks. There are no free lunches. Well, my, my, all my children get free lunches and I get a free check every month. No, it's not free. We have to pay the taxes to pay it for you. And God's not happy about that. In many cases, if you're able-bodied, think about it. 
Well, oh, you're down on the poor people. No, I'm down on lazy people. Uh, same as God is. He hates a sluggard. Remember the lecture, was it the last lecture where it says that a lazy person is like the, uh, a door is to its hinges. All he can do is lay in the bed, bed grunt and turn over. I'd get out and work, but I just don't feel like it. All he is is hinged to the, uh, to the springs and mattress. I'll get my check at the end of the month that it'll be all right and they'll buy my children free lunches. Won't your children be proud of you? I mean, you're, what a heritage you're leaving to them. In a, in a nation where we're all free to make something out of ourselves, look at you. <clears throat> I might be making someone uncomfortable, but I just love winning friends and influencing people. To rebuke someone that needs rebuke is to say to love them. So I do love them and I care. That's why I correct. Be somebody. Be a child of God. Enjoy eternal life or go to hell. That's just exactly the way it is. Well, and I, I know somebody's saying right now, do you mean if I draw, if I stay on welfare all my life, I'll go to hell? No, I, I didn't say that. God said he hates a sluggard, so what are your chances? How many times in, in the 26th chapter did he say, I just hate sluggards? I don't know. Well, what are your chances? Not good, but maybe. He's very forgiving. And it's never too late to make something out of yourself, get hold of your bootstraps, pull yourself up and make something out of yourself that your own children can take a little pride in you. I know there are extenuating circumstances. I'm not talking about handicapped, sick or injured people. They deserve to be taken care of. I'm talking about lazy people. Verse 19. He that, did we get to that? He that, um, tilleth the land shall have plenty of bread. That's it. You work and you're in good shape. But he that followeth after vain, that's empty persons, shall have poverty enough. That's all you're going to have, ever. You don't work, you don't eat. That's what God said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. If a man won't work, don't feed him. Let him starve. I mean, that's God's word. God knows that a man... I don't care how lazy he is, before he starves, he's going to hustle. 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Whose blessings? God's. God's going to see that he gains blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Why? There's no quick way. So you're not going to be innocent because you're going to have to play some crooked shortcuts. Don't be hasty, be patient. Wait for God's blessings, do your best, and you'll always succeed. 21. To have respect of persons is not good. Don't, uh, okay, you know what that means. Don't play favorites among people. If you're in a position in business or uh, a, a um, civil servant or something like that, I don't care if it is your best friend, the same deal goes for everybody, okay? <clears throat> for, for a piece of bread, that man will transgress. In other words, if a man would play favorites, at the same time, he can be bought, okay, for a piece of bread. 22. He that hasteth to be rich, here there goes the old boy in a hurry again, hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him, because it soon will. You, you don't get away with cutting corners to the point that it's criminal. It's going to show up. You will be caught. Verse 23. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. Um, that is to say, he that rebukes... Um, uh, it does not go backwards afterwards, meaning before the fact. He that rebukes, that loves someone enough to say, hey, I warn you, if you continue in that, your children are going to be disappointed in you. I'll use the analogy of uh, the aforementioned. And your grandchildren are going to think you're a disgrace. Because you never amounted to anything in a free country where everything is there if you get out there and hump it. 
So a man that rebukes for the betterment, that is true love, more so than somebody with a smooth tongue and flattering lips that'll say, well, you can't help it. You can't help it at all because you're poor people. You've been oppressed. You've been pushed down. Hey, don't let somebody push you down, friend. This nation, as an example, is uh, everybody has an equal chance, and I mean that. Try to take that away from me, my equal chance. I'll fight in a minute. You should, too. That is to say, for the right to show that you don't need some system or anything else. You, you can cut it on your own because God is with you. I don't care what your race, color, or creed is. Be a can-do type person under God with God's blessings, and you'll always be successful. Flattery will get you nowhere, all right? It's a sin if it's untrue. 24. Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith, It is no transgression. The same is a companion of a destroyer. Do you know who the destroyer is? That's Satan. You're a companion of his? Well, I, I'm not really ripping them off. You see, they're both going to be dead in five years, and I would inherit it. It's mine anyway. No, it isn't. It isn't yours. A will does not take effect until the death of he that uh, created the will in your favor. And I would say if you rob them, you could be removed from it anyway. Don't make excuses for yourself. Love and respect those that brought you into the world, at least for that fact. You may not, they may have done some pretty bad things to you, but you can still appreciate them for that because you exist. Verse 25. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. That, that means... Really, I would translate this a greedy spirit, and I think you'll better understand the parable. He that is of a greedy spirit stirreth up strife, causes trouble everywhere they go. Greed, greed, greed. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Boy, you should always remember that. You know what being made fat means? Rich with God's blessings. Clear conscience. No worry. Back to verse 1 not fleeing when nobody's chasing you or any other time because you know God protects you, that you have a wall around you that no one can penetrate, else God will see that the day comes when reckoning, the reckoning uh, takes place. Uh, so it's so much better. Don't be greedy. God doesn't like it. It's scrupulous, and he stands against it. Verse 26, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Heart is your mind. He that trusts in his own wisdom is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, let, let, you'll better understand if we say walks wisely with the Father from whom all wisdom flows, he shall be delivered. He'll always be a victor. Why? Because... If you think and do not appreciate the wisdom that God gives us from his word whereby it overcomes anything of the, the wisdom of this world, it puts you in a position where you can always win. Oh, there'll be a few hard times, but what are they for a can-do type person like us, okay? You're always going to win. You've got you to gotta cinch on it. If you walk wisely with God. That's what, that's, he promises that over and over and over. You don't have to be afraid. You don't run from anything because you're already foreordained and prepared. Bring them on. Even the destroyer himself is afraid of you. Think about it. 27. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. This word poor so that you don't Feel sorry for everybody that says they're poor means destitute, and that means absolute. It doesn't mean some person that looks very healthy down here standing on the corner with a tin cup that's able to work. 
All right. And I said able to work. Never think that I would not help take care of the handicapped, the ill, or the unfortunate. There's nothing wrong with being down on your luck, but it's a sin to stay that way. Okay? Uh, he, that give, he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. So take care of the poor and handicapped. Our government, thank God for it, is set up whereby we do a pretty good job of that. That's what our taxation is about. And um, through the church and through good people and so on and so forth, okay? 28, uh, don't, don't ever let somebody take advantage of you by a, a sad story about how poor they are when they're a lazy bum trying to rip you off though, okay? Be, be wise and know the difference. That's an unscrupulous person on the other coin. 28. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves. They should. But when they perish, the righteous increase. In other words, wickedness can certainly prevent righteousness from increasing for a short period of time. I'm speaking of in governments, in families. This is one reason why Christ would say, don't unequally yoke yourself with some unscrupulous character. Why? You're tied to the same yoke. He's going to hold you back. So, and uh, I'm speaking of business, ways of the world. Don't yoke yourself to something that's going downhill when you're going uphill. Does that make common sense? That's what it basically is saying. And he will always bless you. Okay, moving right along in Proverbs. We'll pick up the next one in the next lecture. Listen a moment, won't you please?